General Motors just made the best decision of their entire career. Basically rivaling and copying Ford and following in their footsteps, but this is one of the best things Ford's ever done, so I'm okay with copying at this point. But yeah, Mary Barra just got done with the Twitter spaces with Elon Musk, announcing that their vehicles will be switching to the Nax connector in 2025 on the vehicle itself. In that early next year, a CCS2 Nax adapter will become available for current GM customers so that they can access the full 12,000 superchargers available in the United States. And at least in the United States, GM is basically number two or number three, depending on which quarter you look at. So now that we have two huge, very, very popular automakers saying that they're eventually going to be switching to Nax in 2025 and offering adapters to people in 2024, even more so further solidifies that Nax is definitely the future. Once again, I need to give a huge shout out to Ford for enabling this domino effect. This is exactly what I was hoping would happen, but it just feels surreal to finally see like Mary Barra and Elon Musk communicating and complimenting each other and saying that like, yes, this is helpful for the future of electrification because I think most people are all on the same page. If you want mass adoption of EVs, we need to simplify this charging infrastructure and we need a way for people to just grab a cable at any charger and plug it in and boom, you're done. So now that you're going to have three of the most popular EV makers in North America all switching to this connector, it once again pushes an immense amount of pressure on any other EV maker that's still relying on CCS1 to be like, hey, what are you, what are you doing here? What's your long-term plan? Because at this point, I feel even more comfortable saying that most EVs in North America are going to be rocking knacks. Like that's just inevitable at this point. GM and Ford and Tesla put together probably occupy somewhere around 90% of EV market share right now. And Ford and GM and Tesla have more resources than pretty much anyone else in North America to ramp up production and increase their market share. So what's crazy to me is this is not the company that most people were expecting would announce it next. A lot of people were anticipating Rivian. Maybe a lot of people thought it would take two or three more months before someone else would jump on. But the sooner the better, in my opinion, because it increases the desirability of your EVs immediately. But what's interesting is GM is kind of killing off their most popular EV later this year. They said they're going to stop making the Bolt so that they can make more room for their Ultium platform vehicles like the Silverado EV and the GMC Sierra, which is basically just a more luxurious version of the Silverado. And while the Twitter spaces was very short and pretty light on details, it was basically over in like 10 minutes. I'm still curious, like, does this mean every Chevy Bolt owner is going to be able to buy this adapter and therefore one of the most popular EVs in North America that is using CCS? You know, sometimes people can find Chevy Bolts for, you know, $26,000 and then they get a $7,500 credit. Now you're telling me those vehicles that after incentives were under 20 grand are going to have access to the best charging network? Yeah, this might actually clog them up a bit. You know, when Ford announced their transition to Nax and that there would be an adapter available for everybody else, I was like, you know, it, it won't hurt too much because relative to how many superchargers there are, there's not a ton of Mach-E's or F-150 Lightnings. Those are basically just the two Ford EVs. However, the Chevy Bolt has been in production for many, many years, and there's quite a lot of them. At least where I live, they're pretty regularly spotted. And the other big concern that separates the Bolt from the Ford EVs is the Bolts cap out at 50 kilowatts. So Elon said on the Twitter spaces that Tesla is not going to give any preferential treatment to Tesla's own customers. They just want the superchargers to be accessible and open to all and be a fair level playing field. But not all EVs are created equal, Elon. So I could definitely see a scenario where a bunch of Chevy Bolts that are capped at 50 kilowatts end up clogging up superchargers because they're going to take a long time to charge, not to mention their charge port is not really in the proper location. They put theirs on the front left fender, which means to charge at a supercharger, they're going to have to occupy the stall next to them or else the cable might not reach at all. I'm happy, first of all, that they're switching to Nax. It's overall a good thing, but the number of bolts that are slower than pretty much any other vehicle that has supercharging access, you know, Ford's vehicles all were around 150 kilowatts, which is fine, but this one's going to be a little bit more questionable. And I wonder if Tesla could incorporate some way in software to like limit how long you can charge at these superchargers if there's lines and if they're really busy. I guess the best solution is Tesla just needs to increasingly ramp up supercharger availability so that nobody's worried about waiting in line at superchargers anymore. But they're definitely growing faster than anybody else will. And the actual good news about the future of GM electric vehicles like the Chevy Silverado EV is they actually put their charge port in the proper location, unlike the F-150 Lightning. So yeah, just like a Tesla, the Silverado has the charge port on the driver
driver's side rear, which means that most of the Silverado EVs that end up using this adapter are probably going to be able to back in at any supercharger and plug in without occupying any excess stalls. So in some ways, the future GM vehicles are better equipped to switch to NAX than Ford's own vehicles, because as far as we're aware, F-150 Lightning or even Ford's T3 project is not going to be repositioning that charge port location. I hope they do, but they haven't formally announced it. So in some ways, I'm a little bit concerned about how many bolts are on the road and how they may clog up the superchargers. But long term, I don't think it's going to be a huge issue because Tesla is just going to continue to ramp up charger availability. And now with the other big three switching to NAX, I think this also pushes a lot of pressure on charger manufacturers like ChargePoint and EVgo and Electrify America. Don't you want to offer the connector that most EVs are going to have in the future? They're probably going to start offering NAX in the not too distant future anyway. So overall, it's just great news because I was really, really losing hope for a long time after Tesla announced the NAX port and said it was open for anybody to use. And there weren't that many announcements. I was really concerned. I was like, oh, geez, does this mean for the future we're always just going to have two plugs? But this is the scenario I wanted in my head. Clearly, NAX, in my opinion, is the far superior port. It's easier to handle. It was great to hear Mary Barra actually mention that on the Twitter spaces. And it's better for accessibility. It supports vehicle to grid, vehicle to load. It supports higher peak charging speeds. Frankly, it's better than any other connector in Europe or in China, but they've already picked their standards in those other countries, so there's not much Tesla can do about it. But here, there hasn't been a chosen selector. It's up to the brands, and I'm very thankful that the brands are actually collaborating. Like, it's great to see the CEO of GM and the CEO of Tesla just, like, communicating together on a public forum and saying, yes, we're going to work together and it's going to be great. So Rivian, every day you don't make this announcement, people are having a harder time respecting you. I've already seen some of my friends say, if you switch to Nax, you'll get a customer. But until then, uh, I think the Silverado EV is looking even more appealing now than before. It's got the right charge port location. It'll have access to over 12,000 superchargers. And it's supposed to have a 400 mile range and somehow also qualify for the federal tax credit. So they're starting with the fleet version. But once there's a version of the Silverado that individuals can buy, yeah, that thing's going to be, I think, the truck to get for a lot of people. It's got the mid gate. It's got the range. It's got the big frunk. And it should have the decent charging speeds. And now also the great charging network. Yeah, I think GM's going to have a top seller on their hands. They just won over, I think, a ton of customers. I'm very, very impressed by them because in the past, I've been critical of GM and I've said that everything they do seems to just be to make themselves look better in the press. But this actually feels like a really, really good call. And oh my God, I just realized the Hummer EV is going to be able to use superchargers. That's also going to take probably a long time to charge. <laughs> what other concerns do you guys have? What things do you wish Mary and Elon would talk about? Like the different voltages and how that's going to work? Because the Hummer EV is on a higher voltage architecture that the superchargers are not optimized for. So how's that going to cap out? I actually haven't seen anyone try to charge a Hummer with the Magic Dock, but hey, well, it may be slow. At least it's in the proper location, just like a Tesla. It's on the driver's side back. So the Hummer will be huge, but it won't have to occupy multiple stalls to charge for however many hours it may take for that massive battery pack to charge up. Oh, I still hate the Hummer. But GM just won a lot of respect for me. So who do you guys think is next? Feel free to drop your comments and predictions down below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day. Thank <laughs> you.